Hello ladies and gentlemen, Dave Dobbs here. It's the 23rd of February 2024. Um, I think my computer is a bit delayed and a bit slow at the moment, so apologies if the recording's coming out a bit funny. I think the, I've just gone and deleted a lot of stuff, it doesn't seem to have changed very much, so maybe I've got to strip it down and kind of clean out the fans a little bit. But um, it's flooding here on the river where I am at the moment, and um, and we know what's causing it. It's this object here, this what some might describe as a lenticular cloud, except it is on its side, and um, and that's very interesting and very much kind of like um, it's what I'm I'm telling you gonna you're gonna see you're 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 coming to this um, this point here where where these objects are. You know the, the the proportions of these, like I say, because obviously I've packed all these planets in so close to the sun here, as in as in Mars, Earth, um, Venus, and and Mercury, very very close, packed in to try and get this whole model in. As I'm as all the different sightings seem to be, you know, it's very difficult to work out how this model really works and whether I'm correct or not. This is my eighth or maybe eighth eighth model, potentially ninth. Um, model of trying to build the whole solar system as 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 what we're really seeing it, but giving um, obviously the sun motion, and you know we live pretty much in a static sun model. You know you wouldn't kind of picture a comet without a tail, and yet we could see our sun in the in the centre with all the planets in a perfect concentric kind of ring, and have no clue as to its direction in the scheme of things. And that's a big part of what I'm trying to bring forward in in this model. But um, you know, when we saw last year, um, coming back to um, um, these sort of shots, these again, they're lenticular clouds, but they're on the side. You know, we associate lenticular clouds building up in layers above. You know, a high a high point we keep seeing you know like a mountain or something like that that they gather they gather above and yet here we keep seeing these lenticular clouds on their side and um defying what we how we understand them and i'm telling you this is this object when this one came in it was the massive the massive um earthquake in in um in turkey and the same same with this one two turkeys when these you know people have started calling them earthquake clouds now you know, they're lenticular clouds that are on their side. There was actually an object inside there, and that's the gas cloud that follows this thing behind. Because what they, their primary of what they really orbit is spewing out iron, as I've often discussed. And this is, and these these objects pick that that iron up and drag it along. And and you know, this gives us an idea really how we should be seeing our sun in terms of giving it the motion it deserves and having a model that de demonstrates that, so you can. You can have kind of motion in 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 your scheme of things, and that's what we don't have in this in this present model. Anyway, the that was quite interesting that this shot just came in. Like I say, it's been um, seriously flooding here on the river, and I'm just going to very briefly show you what's going on out there. Oh my goodness me! Let me go here and take you out. It's a total state in my in in my boat at the moment. But, uh, You can see it out there, but the um, with the walkways completely um, the comp walkways completely under water there. Um, everyone's trying to kind of get in across the um. So it came right up to that barrier there. It came just short of the barrier there, and um, that's the first time it's done that since. That's the first time it's done that since. Well, it's, it did it obviously last year. And it's been doing it a few times, just in the in the last kind of like uh, eighteen months. Come on, Shanti, here we come. Good girl, sweetheart. Um, so it's been quite full on. So I've been kind of stuck on the bow, and you know, people who've donated a little bit of money towards my cause. You know, there was like one hundred and twenty pounds in the um, in the. Um, Shall we get my computer to work? Hopefully that's kind of on. Anyway, we shall see if that works out or not. Um, so let's come back to um, let's come back to that shot. Anyway, yeah, there was um, there was one hundred and twenty pounds in the in the in the PayPal account. It was kind of like 
it was amazing so thank you so much and a few people have made a, a few donations in the um, the, um directly to my paypal and that really helped me get through the last kind of like the last kind of um the last week because i've been just stuck on the boat and we've just been kind of like uh like i say the last time was in um it flooded like this which was this was back in 2013 at christmas time and you can see that's where uh, that's where the um um that's where I am at the moment, and you know that's that's how high it came um, about a month ago. So we're seeing these really unusual. The time before that was 1968. The time before that was like I think it ran about the sort of time we discovered Pluto, around about the 1920s, 1930s. You know, this is rare that this 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 river completely floods, and um, and so um, but you know we do a lot of risk assessment and everything else like that to make sure that we you know we work together and and um but it's been a um it's been a it's been a hell of an ordeal to um to to work through it and to um and to take all the necessary precautions and preempt the whole thing um but um what was happening back then you know when you go back to um when you go back to because that was december 2013 um let's go back to um Let's go back to 2013. And that was the last time that the, um, that was obviously the last time the, the, the pair kind of um, synced up and that was, that was the, um, that was obviously Fukushima at the time. And that, that was, this, this was the flyby that I just showed you again, 12 years later in 2000 and, um, 22 and 23 and um but 2013 you know that december 2013 it was it was what i call the red kachina again here it was it was it was this one that caused the big flood in 2013 here in my opinion you know i might be wrong and of course there's the pair again um in 2013 it seemed very small because they're 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 back here they're just coming into view into a just coming into our daylight sky here. So we're looking at them from 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 a, from a great distance. Um, we'd be like, you know, back here sort of thing, and we can't see them there. But I've bunched, like I say, I've bunched these up so close together that it traverses this part much quicker, really, and that's a much much bigger section of the orbit than obviously is being demonstrated on here to um, to bring it all into a into a single into a single um, into one frame, one one single view sort of thing, which is what I've attempted to do here. So the proportions are kind of tricky, and as you get to know and work out these proportions, if you're going to use this model to try and work out what you were close to when you when you arrived on the planet, it's worth th worth thinking about all of that. You know, these these are still very much ballpark, but it's attempting to understand the overall directions of things, as in the sun moving ultimately in this direction. And one thing it doesn't show on this model which is really worth considering as well is that you don't really get the kind of a, the whole arc of one system cutting through the other system as in um as in here you can imagine there's a point of crossing here and it comes over and then there's a point of crossing here so we get two points of crossing here but in this model i've kind of like um i've it's very difficult so it's very difficult for me to catch that you've got the path here and the path here and really they would keep coming round and cross again but I've had to keep them here to capture all the movements and to kind of sync up kind of like from 1939 I've kept them on the same place so that when I talk about the kind of two points of crossing you don't really fully get that on this model but you do get an idea of some of the kind of like of the timings that we've seen throughout since 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 the second world war began all the crazy sightings and and the t timings and the way these things all sync up we can see the patterns we can predict them quite quite clearly you know it's it's you know for you know what to say really but um but um but there you go that that's the um there were some more shots that came in with that actually there was um there was obviously that shot you know posted by um that was posted by worlds of signs um, that came in on the 19th of February 2024 and he two other people posted a very similar thing um, you know and it's 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 um, 
there was that sign a sighting from um, where was that that was in Spain and um, and this was also in um, this was also in Spain and there was another shot of this in Andalusia I think as well but um, uh, Mr. MVB talking about um, the comet. 12p um Pondsbrook, i think it's called um talking about how it's going to come into view and to me this is um i mean if this is one of the pair which is very possible it is um it's um yeah we're going to get an amazing view of it just like we're getting an amazing view of it now um or one of the pair. I don't think this is obviously the one that's flying by because I can't be out there and next to us at the same time. So, or possibly that is um, um, the red kachina going off. If we come back to um, back to two thousand and twenty-three, come to, back down to the end of two thousand and twenty-three. Yeah, that's sort of like um, again. It's this. Um, you know, is it is it is it this one coming out that we're seeing now going off into the night sky, as the, as, or is it one of the pairs pair coming in? It's um, certainly we're seeing all the volcanic activity, all the activity we'd expect, all the crazy sightings. Um, you know, we won't get another flyby now till um, yeah, we're going to get some interesting views maybe of it, but I don't think we're going to get any better views than what we're getting at the moment, um, and. We are. That's this is our. This is where all the activity is going to happen for us next. All around here, isn't it interesting that you know? To just mentioning earlier about the 11th of March flyby 2011 and showing you the shot there and where it was when the pairs flew by. You know they're obviously they're coming back here at the moment. They're behind us now. It was two years ago. They would have been close over here, but um, or last year and the year before, but. Um, now they're every every month they've every year they've been dropping back a month and um but on the eleventh of March this year um they're going to fire up their large hadron collider and um which by um so they're gonna get it going now and uh, in in March and um planning for the big heavy lead iron collisions for um for September October right at um, right at this point here and um, right when we're around here when we're next to all these big objects again so I don't know isn't it, isn't it funny that it coincides and these these collisions you know you understand that you can't create or destroy energy so we know that once they you know they're they're sending these particles around a 27 kilometer long, long ring at 99.99 percent of the speed of light and um, how Einstein knew you couldn't go faster than that I don't know how he worked all that out um, but when he came up with these kind of theories of um, of relativity you know is um, is quite beyond me but um, he seemed to get got that figure exactly right and um, and so once they reach them once they reach that kind of point once you're putting energy in and you've got them up to the speed of light what happens when you put more energy in well, the energy keeps going somewhere and it's got to be doing something because you can't create or destroy energy. So what happens is the mass starts increasing. Now, we're kind of told that, oh, you could, we've got nothing to worry about because these are tiny particles that can barely be seen. But what's actually happening is their mass is massively increasing. And they're, this is, this is, they're, this is, this is a, this is, in my opinion, it's a doomsday machine. It's an utter doomsday machine that works on the back of war and aggression. It's like a, you know, if you like, the Large Hadron Collider is the karmic outcome for all-out war on this plane, which is everything that they're trying to get off the ground now, is to try and get all-out war off the, off, 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 off the ground and trying to do everything possible to force Britain, Israel, um, America, Australia, you know, just to force all these countries to um, to cross the Rubicon, if you like. When I say cross the Rubicon, I'm talking about the point where you know Julius Caesar, when he put, took his um, his legions across the across the Rubicon and that close clo that closer to the Ro to, to the Roman 
to Rome itself. It, he became a threat to Rome. One minute he was Rome's, you know, fighting, you know, most powerful fighting force, and the next minute he was enemy of Rome because he'd crossed that Rubicon and there was no way back. He was at war. He would have to take Rome, or Rome would have to take him. There was no, there was one way or the other. It was a war situation, absolute. There couldn't be reversed, and that's what they're attempting to do. And I certainly see because because um, if we if we um, if you look at just what happened yesterday in the news, it was um, it was um, it was you know I don't know if you watched the whole thing, but um, there was a massive walkout. The SNP walked out because their vote. That they they'd attempted to kind of force a ceasefire to use to use their power in in the because they've got a kind of a coalition seat with Labour Party with Keir Starmer here and and um, so they've got power and their their basic power as far as I'm understanding was vetoed um, by the by the Speaker because he had a quick discussion with Keir Starmer um, and he's ex Labour and you know, the whole thing kind of like smacks of really, and clearly Keir Starmer is very, very kind of, he's got very strong Zionist views. And um, and so they've kind of agreed that there should be a ceasefire, ceasefire under, 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 the, under the pretense that, that, you know, the Palestinians have got to return all the hostages, they've got to completely accept all kind of like it, it, um, Israel's conditions, they've got... Um, you know they've just created a whole load of things that can you know it needs a ceasefire and those sort of things can be negotiated but you can't say we want a ceasefire after you've completely surrendered and giving up everything and you've just you know i mean how, how are they going to return these hostages most of them you know they've they've just absolutely blanket bombed the whole of gaza pretty much it's just there's nothing left you know can you imagine if there if there are any any hostages alive you know if there are any hostages alive which is looking to be quite doubtful you know no one's got any internet coverage no one's got any phone coverage no one's got anything there all that everything's been shut down the press can't go in there because the press are getting killed as quickly as the kind of palestinians themselves there's just it's complete shutdown so there's not going to be you know now all the all the all the all the palestinians palestinians are down right down in the south of gaza and um huddled together and it's it's going to be a bloodbath basically it's just the, the the british government coming together and really bringing about a ceasefire to kind of save potentially hundreds of thousands if not millions of more lives as they because we know what the israelis are going to do they are going to get rid of absolutely every one one of them they're going to they're going to wipe out the bloodline literally wipe out the bloodline <clears throat> literally it's just like absolutely unbelievable so it's been it's it's been a massive um it's made to look like it's uh, and you know this whole thing it's all about the kind of house speaker and that sort of stuff and it's not about the house speaker it's just it's just a messy situation where we've just got absolute zionist warmongers that are desperate to push us into all out world war three literally you can see it they're doing everything in their power and um so we've just got to keep waging peace and keep realizing and keep coming back to the side of the fence that we're on in this and know that we just want peace in this situation and we want to bring harmony to this situation and and um, and that seems to be a long way off at the moment and um, it's funny because this was the day where sort of like uh, where Julian Assange was going to be his hearing was going to be um, um, it was going to be today and it's I don't know if it is going to be today it's just looking like um, What's this? One day ago, UK High Court delays decision of on extradition of WikiLeaks Julian Assange, and it's it's um it's it's all just too embarrassing for the government at the moment because they're um they're being pushed on the back foot, which is a good which is a good thing really. So it's um it's all kind of like uh, you know the people don't want this war, the people want um. I'm of mind people don't want this and um, yeah I just don't know what to say really guys it's just like um, you know if he goes to America he's very likely it's going to be really really bad 
you know, because he'll be sent to the most rednecks, he'll be extradited to the most redneck state, and where capital menu is, to, capital punishment is is on the top of the menu, and it's it's um it's um it's going to be a messy situation, and uh, it's what to do. So we're kind of like we're in that situation now where. Um, where yeah, I've just got through their last little flyby. I'm still again absolutely broke. So you know, I'm gonna post because I'm struggling reading these 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 next four chapters, which are the hardest chapters of the book. Really, these next four chapters for me. Um, but anyway, I'm I am cracking on with it. I'm doing it. But I'm gonna put the links because I've already done the first four chapters. So I'm gonna put the link to those four chapters onto my Patreon account, so you can watch them there. And obviously, you can um, you can. Um, you can see them. You can see them directly on my channel if you haven't. If you haven't. If you haven't um, followed me so far on on the book wise, because I wrote the book for this time, and I guess it's my last kind of like a ditch attempt to try to bring my own piece because this was this was this is my attempt to everything that's going on now is what I said would happen. You know that we would kick all that we would kick our dinner plates. Keep, you know, I published that back in two thousand and eleven, saying that we you know the way we're going at the moment. Our current direction with what we're going to try and create because of the door that opens to humanity and to the soul groups that incarnate in humanity right now they want to plummet the vibration down to block that that passage it's not like it means you're leaving earth if you if you choose to go down the go through these doors that are open to the souls that incarnate on earth at the moment all it is really as i'm understanding it is a change of soul address so there, there, there are the four chapters down there. But I will put links on them onto my Patreon account as a big thank you to all my patrons who, 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 like I say, got 120 quid, and it really helped me get through this flood. But I'm still totally, totally, totally brass it. I've got like a tenner left, literally. And I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to try and just going to sell some bits and do whatever I can. But they're going to go up there. Also, if you haven't done it already, please check out the Colburn Bible there as well and listen to that because that will blow you away. You know, you, you remember this is this was unearthed when Henry VIII destroyed the the um, the Abbey in Glastonbury. He burnt it down and hung drawn quartered the Abbot and and um, and basically there was a lot of literature literature that was released and one of the things that was released was the Colburn Bible that had been held by the Catholic Church. It's certainly not a Christian Bible. It's a it's an account of the Great Dragon and here we are in the in the year of the Dragon. You know, it's just begun. It began on the tenth of February, tenth um, of February um, this year, and it's yeah, it's uh, it's you know, it was a hell of a it was a hell of an opening with with this coming kind of nine days after the um, coming into view, nine days after the um, after the beginning of the Chinese New Year, so. You know the dragon's gonna gonna come in. We can we know where it's gonna. We know what's gonna come. You know we we can kind of see what's gonna happen. The the massive activity that was happening. Um, last year at this point, you know you remember that it was like I say it was last year at this point. It's you know there was just um there was sixty one volcanoes simultaneously erupting, which is like I say that's breathtaking when you think of think of. Britain's local local volcano, as in kind of nearest, I guess, would probably nearer than Iceland is um, is is Stromboli and Etna, you know, off the coast of um, Sicily and near Italy and in, in, in the Med, and um, like I say, on a big eruption, that's kind of eighty million tons, you know, certainly Stromboli, it's like eighty million tons of carbon dioxide in a single eruption. It kind of dwarfs what the European Union's pumping out by by, by a big factor, and we're just ignoring that. And we're looking at our 0.04 percent carbon dioxide, and all screaming out every time the world goes crazy that we want to be carbon zero, and we're not really looking at the real situation. No one's really kind of turned around and said, "Look, what we want is abundant clean energy," and that's what I talk about a lot, and some of the focuses that we need to have at this time. So, um, but you know, at this time, as I dis as I discussed in my most of my videos, from here at this point, from here to here. From this point, um, it has exponentially got worse since 2018, 2019. 
we've just seen the storms getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and now all that's happening is it's moving further into the northern hemisphere so we know that when we come around to this time in July, August, September and October it's going to be an immense time for us it's going to be a massive massive time it's going to be bigger than this it's going to be bigger than 61 volcanoes and it's going to be massively affecting the northern hemisphere mega storms mega changes just like I told you you have mega storms and flooding here and it's been flooding right on the river here and it's just like it's a full-on thing to see but we can navigate through these I've navigated through this if I hadn't have been here and and navigated through this time you know there's two boats that sank down further further, further down the way and one boat got washed away um, there's lots of stuff going on that's just not being addressed and people aren't being led to prepare in the right ways and to consider what they can do about this which is why I'm doing this whole pilgrimage thing of bringing us together for a pilgrimage for the 21st of June and start aligning with that that date because that's as I'm showing here the forward motion of of this and so hopefully I'm going to be hopefully I'm going to be doing lots at random around the 21st that is going to be involved happiness high celebration and um, and good vibes and it's going to start hopefully with me at the, St at the Stonehenge on the 21st of June and a and then hopefully going to Glastonbury maybe and hopefully kind of like maybe getting involved in the Gorilla Bar I don't know if 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 they'll have me back it's all just like uh you know do they want someone my age at the at the Gorilla Bar anymore God knows I don't know but um but um you know I'm feeling a bit outdated and everything else like that but you never know I might make it back there <laughs> the um it, it's it's there's lots planned and and um, I'm gonna like I say keep recording um, laughing gas and it's good there's gonna be it's gonna be you know there's gonna be bits and pieces there's gonna be there's gonna be big bits and slow bits because it's a bit of a struggle and I, I don't read that well but um, I'm gonna keep getting it up there and um, keep adding to that and anyone who's supporting me at the moment honestly I saw one person had, had put more money in not just put five pounds in um, a month but I'd put like um, um, $35 or something a month or something silly it was just like amazing so I will go through an individual I've just been frantic here because I've just been I've been threadbare and everything's just on a bit like it's just such high stress at the moment when money runs out it puts you under a real kind of high pressure and it may really turns you inside out and it makes it really stressful and it is you know any help right now is so, so massively appreciated right now because it's just such a desperate time for me and I've just spread myself a bit too thin and and um and I think emotionally I'm really struggling to communicate with a lot of people even doing this right now is just it feels so kind of like you know I'm up against you know I talked about in a couple of videos back about finding the reason to do the things that you do and um and um those who are following me that are kind of put get trying to get your own stuff out there and trying to begin your own process and bring it begin your own journey with this and trying to align with the celestial event that you're really in and cosmically align with that in however you can you can do that you know in however you can you can align with your solar system and align that with the cosmos and come into an alignment with a galactic alignment to kind of tap into that greater wisdom that you really are part of that is part of you so that's a big part of what what's going on here so um so any help you can do please get involved with the patreon account i know i'm sorry it's a bit slow and, and everything else like that but it's it's just my struggling times at the moment i'm just dealing with a lot this end and struggling like everyone i guess is struggling at the moment and so any help is amazing but you know you've you're you're as far as i can see you're done for flybys now till 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 this time up here until we get to kind of like late july august september october you know but you know around about this time i've got marked up here this is this is where it gets absolutely massive this is a big time for you and you want to get right with your connection to divinity through this this is a big time to really think about your place in the scheme of things you know ultimately 
you know, my parents were both channels, and the first thing that my father ever channeled to me, or, well, you know, he channeled, um, I think he channeled uh, John, who he used to call, he just came by the name John, because when he, one of his incarnations, he lived as a monk near where I was brought up in Sussex. And so he liked coming through and using that name, but he had many names, and he obviously had many incarnations, and he could have come through many different names, many different beings. And he channeled, my mum my and dad channeled, my dad channeled White, John and White Cloud and others and my mum um, when my parents split up um, and went their ways White Cloud started my mum started channeling White Cloud herself and but um, the first message whether it was from John I think it was actually from John but he said understand you can only serve one master you can only serve one master and that's what this is all about and you know, we're all choosing a God here and there's a lot of different stories that you can go down at the moment. So many different stories. Some of you are going to think that Trump's the second coming, and maybe he is. Some of you think are going to think that this, that carbon. Do you just want to be carbon zero? And you know the way the governments are taking you, and the direction the governments are attempting to take, the Western governments are attempting to take you. There's a journey to being carbon zero. It's a journey to all-out war, a war that can never be won if it's waged. That's why I wrote Laughing Gas. That's why I did the whole thing, just in case anyone's waiting and anyone's really think I've just put some money in, and they still hasn't posted those things on Facebook. Like I say, I will with this video. I'll post up those first four, first four videos, just the links to the Patreon account. So this, so it is something up there, and I will keep adding those chapters. I'm so sorry I've been a bit delayed but but um, like I say I have delivered you this model and um, I will post up this model now with a few more of the overlays and when I do the new when I finally release these first four chapters with the next four, cha four chapters I'm gonna keep putting this with my, this model with all the latest overlays um, I'm gonna keep adding and adding and adding to this model and then finally we, we will get to the point where it's um, where it's um, you know where all, all the overlays, as I always do with the models I just keep adding the overlays to try and give you a better understand, understanding to try and help you kind of navigate you know I'm not trying to say this is correct because I've updated this all the way through and I've no doubt this will update this can be updated again and and I can already see lots of errors in this already but it's the closest I've got to a ballpark understanding covering such a long amount of time to give you a kind of a window of where the planets were when 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 you were born and um, I will leave that on the I will also leave this leave the whole model on to, on my patreon account like I say with these overlays so you can go back and I'll, I'll leave that available to all you know not just a member so you can join and and um, and not pay and um, and get access to that model and go up and down the timeline and start thinking about the planets when they were in, where they were it's a it's a big thing you know what we're talking about is Jupiter and it's isn't it isn't it crazy that the kind of like the whole Chinese you know the, the, the twelve cycle, the twelve kind of the, 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 their their twelve zodiacs, their twelve you know animal totem zodiacs. Um, in you know you'd have thought it'd been thirteen, thirteen because it's it's it starts on the on the new moon, so it seems to be lunar, lunar a, a kind of a lunar calendar, and yet it's not a thirteen year cycle. It's a it's a twelve year cycle representing something that's very akin to again Jupiter to the very all of these planets that we see spinning around they all have the same Jupiter-esque mechanics which means that even though we would consider Jupiter or whatever this big blue planet that we reinvent every 84 years and have done since kind of like um, since since Galileo's time um, we we see that as a primary say Jupiter and all the planets moving around around it but what what happens when that one planet gets so close to our sun that it loops around and drags all its planets with with it all its moons if you like with it and they come trailing around in in not in like an all spinning around in a, in a cycle like this in like a big hub of planets all spinning around like that but they one and the other and the other and the other in this kind of odd sequence but in actual fact they that's how we experiencing them when they're doing flybys of our sun when our sun comes so close to what Jupiter or whatever we want to call the big blue object whether we want to call it Uranus whether we want to call it Neptune whether we want to call it Pluto whatever we want to call it 
you know, we have to reinvent it because it keeps turning up in the wrong place and it contradicts the standard model, which just doesn't make sense. The standard model defies Kepler's laws in every way, shape and form. It gives every planet, they add a different perihelion point, which defines the front edge of, of an object. You know, you'd consider, like say, the, a comet and a tail and its tail. And, it, you know, you wouldn't think of a comet without a tail. And yet you, you'd think of the sun in static with all the planets in a perfect ring. You wouldn't give it motion in your mind's eye. And, um, and you know, we've all got to upgrade our understanding of our place in the scheme of things now. We've got to take responsibility of that. We've got to come out of these grand deceptions. We've got to start evolving our ideas. And, you know, it's... Um, you know, but you're, we're all ultimately choosing, you know, we're, through our incarnations in this earth, we are ultimately choosing the locations, our souls. If you like, you know, this is a, this is a time when a lot of humans, their souls that are incarnating in them can change their soul address. It doesn't mean you stop coming to Earth. It just means you come to Earth from a different place. And that's what's being opened up to the soul group that's in, incarnating in humanity right now. Is that a door is opening for that soul group to migrate to a high vibrational home. It's a big thing to get your head around. And it doesn't mean that you have to go this time. Maybe you maybe maybe you've got your reasons and you've got your loyalties in other places. Maybe it's just you know they want you to intellectualize this war and to come up with the intellectual reason why it should happen. And if that's your journey and you need to go on that and you need to sit on the fence in that, and um, then you've got to do that as well. We've all got to be true to who we are right now. So that honey in the heart, a thousand thank yous. Any support you can give me right now, honestly, and any you know the other thing I've put out on the Patreon account is that. The members, I'd really like to offer the members the opportunity to come together. We've got Calvin looking for Hobbs there, who came up with the amazing shot on the 15th of October 2020. Um, just come back to that shot. Just to... Um, not that shot. Oh, I've gone past it, haven't I? Have I put it on there? Maybe I just flashed it. Oh no, I'm too early. I'm, I'm looking at um, that was Nick 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 Thomas's shot on the um, on the 9th of July, and I haven't put um, I haven't put the other shots. I've, I've gone to keep adding shots to this. By the way, there I was going to mention some other people there, but I thought actually let's not get too confusing. But Calvin looking for Hobbs has has joined the um, joined my Patreon account, and thank you so much, Calvin, for doing that. It's just like it's a massive support. It really is all my members, and I am going to get a bit more. You know, I'd really like to get together, and so I've put out that would you guys who paid like to come together and make a Zoom, um, have a Zoom meeting with me and bring all your discussions together, and anyone else who wants to kind of pay and join and become part of that. Not to say that's a requisite, because you know I'm just, but I'd really like to have a big discussion and talk about you know where what what all your intentions are in terms of a, in terms of how you're going to connect. You know, I'm not going to try and put direction into you. I'm just curious about what you what what you think and how you feel, and we can talk about whether you want to make that live and whether we want to record that and make that live, and I can, and whether I release that or not. We can discuss that. I don't want everyone to think, oh, this is going to be going to go out there and and be live. It doesn't have to be. You know, it would just be nice to have a uh, have a have a bit of a meeting and a greeting, and we better offer some gratitude for your support, and we can decide during that time if if we if if anyone says, oh, I don't want to really be this public I like the idea of just us coming together and having a little chat every now and then then I'm also up for that you know I'll you know it it will be our little speaker's corner that you can sort of like come in and get get in part get, get involved with obviously you've got the comment section there and I think a lot of people read the comment sections you know I always go to the comment sections and see what people take of of different things and and, and view that and and view the you know great great debate happens in the comment sections and um so you all have a chance to have a voice out there and get to say what 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 you want to say and um, so please get involved in that. Like I say, I'm going to release Laughing Gas. I wrote it for this time. The next four chapters after the first four are really difficult, and it's all about cosmic protection and about you know there's times when you have to develop that, and there's a lot of stuff that you're going to have to develop to get through these times. 
because you know we're talking about what we're talking about is going into a singularity and going through this time you know I mentioned the Colburn Bible in the Colburn Bible you know after the transit people's guides and lots of people's guides and gods were gone they'd been separated because of their choices from their um, their soul ancestry because their vibration had gone below that which their soul ancestry could could connect on they, they plunged in with humanity had plunged in vibration and I'm of a mind that the vibration is much higher now so there's a, ma there's a massive opportunity for a lot of people right now but they're gonna desperately try and snare you into all sorts of low vibrational techniques to for form you into intellectualizing the the right of genocide and make terrible mistakes that you don't need to make and it's going to be a long time which means that it's a long time for a soul to be in stuck in a realm of you know the realm that exists beyond this realm where a lot of souls have been stuck in and a lot of them are trying to get out and have been dreaming of getting it out and of that of being stuck in this in this in this loop and um so there's great opportunities out there and there's all for discussion so um Anyway, it's all going on. It's all happening. Everything that I wrote in Laughing Gas is happening, and it will help you and prep you and help you kind of develop you your own process of seeing this. And that's what you've, we've all got to begin a journey where we are initiating things ourselves and waking up, really waking up. And um, you know, a lot of your guides, a lot of our guides are gonna leave now they're gonna you know many of your guides are already incarnate on this earth and they have they, they have a lot of knowledge and so often guides are incarnate on this earth and um and many of you will find that your guides are very close to you in living in, in, when, and and you we, we we it's a very it's a very big complicated process that's happening on this planet it's not as simple as you think your guides aren't as far away from you as you might as you as you as you might consider and so there's a lot of stuff that's going on but your guides are going to have to migrate those who are going to go through this if they haven't gone already and they're not there already and they're not coming from that space then they're going to have to migrate across and so there's going to be a massive loss of direction a massive loss for all of us in this process many of us have lost our guides already because of the process that's going on and the journeys that they have to take so it's a very unsettling time this is a very scary time and so you're going to have to go deep within to find wisdom and protection and you're going to have to take care of a lot of that protection where you've been looked after in many different ways some of that protection is not going to be there and you're going to have to take that on and start doing that yourself as we go through this massive transition and so it's all to be discussed and it's all to be thought about and it's all to be considered and um, and I and like I say if you want to get involved in a discussion there on on zoom with me and, and get the members to, to, to come together I'd really like to open that up and to feel that I could give you back something for, for, for those who are joining me on there and and um, and have a discussion and we could just see where it goes um, have a think about that. Leave comments on the, like I say, anyone can join my Facebook, my uh, Patreon account. Um, if you pay, obviously you get get access. But I'll make sure that this model, this full model, is up there, um, just for you know non-paying members as well. And and um, and we 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 because I put it up there for a little bit, and it's you know it's what it's it's whatever we can do to help each other right now. It's it's the way in which we help each other is going to be. It's gonna. This is the time to. Thinking about, yeah, we all got to try and help each other a little bit. So anyway, high stress for me at the moment because it's just absolutely pulling my hair out, wondering where it's all going to come from and that sort of stuff. But I also know that I've got to do this work as well, and I've got to keep plodding on and um, by hook or by crook. So, but this, this, this is this this flyby now that's just come in. That's going to be your last flyby till. You know, I mean, yeah, you might see a few more bits and pieces here and there, but you know, it's in terms of crazy activity. You know, that's where you got. You know, 
late July, August is when it's all going to start after this now, guys. You've got to enjoy summer, but do whatever you've got to do. Make your mission to connect with your God in however you see that and do whatever process you can to raise your vibration through this. This is a time you need to best be the best human being you can and be as compassionate as you can and talk peace and real come up with real resolutions not the kind of like the spin the terrible spin that was just enacted yesterday in the house of in the house of commons that was just dreadful zionism at its absolute most evil and worst you know that means that the genocide is about to go absolutely crazy in the south of Gaza now. That means a lot of people are about to be wiped off the face of the planet. This massive agenda. Wiping out the bloodline. Wiping out the Palestinian bloodline. Honey in the heart, a thousand thank yous. You know, thank you. Bye bye, ciao.